Okay, I think we can get started. Um, there will be a few more people joining, but uh, it's time to uh, tell you about uh, Synapse and Hugging Face. So once again, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, it's really, really cool to see that we have people from all over the world joining us. So appreciate it. I hope you will uh, you will learn quite a few things. Uh, so my name is uh, Julien. I am the chief evangelist for Hugging Face, and I'm very happy to be joined this morning by uh, Cynthia from Synapse. So Cynthia, can you uh, please introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks to Julien. Uh, so I'm Cynthia Perrier. I've joined Synapse Medicine as a data scientist almost uh, two years ago. Before that, I did a PhD thesis in a mathematics lab specialized in models for oncology. And I've worked for uh, technology transfer as well. Uh, here at Synapse, I'm working on many projects, such as the one we are going to talk about today, which is a project with the French Ministry of Health uh, and their website, uh, Santé.fr. Uh, okay, we awesome. Can elaborate later. Oh, I think we will. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will. Um, okay, so uh, well, yeah, let's get started. So uh, you know, Cynthia, can you tell us a little bit about uh, about Synapse Medicine and uh, the the mission that you uh, that you set for yourselves? Yeah, so so the mission of Synapse Medicine is to provide uh, reliable and useful information about drugs for everyone. Um, the project was funded in 2017 by two medical doctors specialized in public health and in pharmacology, Clément Gers and Louis Letigné, and one engineer, uh, Alicia Belle Etoile. And since then, we've developed several uh, pro products uh, for hospital health system and even the government uh, regarding healthcare technology for pharmacovigilance, care coordination, etc. And we've also developed several COVID-19 COVID initiatives since the beginning of uh, the pandemic. Um, and the most famous one is now technology that is called the Medication Shield um, that help uh, the French FDA to monitor the adverse drug reaction uh, from the COVID-19 campaign. Um, so we work with health tech companies, hospital, governmental institutions. Um, maybe we can show the next slide uh, for a few numbers. Um, we've worked now with seven countries, including uh, USA and Japan, for example, uh, several uh, hospitals specialized in cancer and um, other ones. Uh, and we are happy that we have raised $23 million last March for a total of 40 million raised since the beginning of Synapse Medicine to scale our technology in France and abroad. Okay, sounds great. Um, sounds great. And, and you're based in, in Paris, right? No, we are based in Bordeaux, actually. Oh, but Bordeaux, even better. In okay. Bordeaux, but we now have uh, a workplace uh, in Paris. Oh, okay, there you go. Soon and soon in New York. And we also have a, a beginning of workplace in Japan, in Tokyo. Okay, and are you hiring? <laughs> Yeah, um, for now, it's a good question. I'm not sure we are hiring right now, but uh, keep in touch. Yeah, if you have a great <laughs> resume, <laughs> uh, I be, think you can still send soon. it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, and, and stay in Bordeaux. It's it's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, really nice city. Uh, yeah, it is. All right. Uh, well, let me let me tell you just a you know few quick things about hogging face um, the, the, this session is really about uh, synapse medicine but uh, you know as we will see uh, synapse has used hugging face models to build a really really amazing application um, and uh, if you've never heard about hugging face um, we're uh, well we try to build the best uh, machine learning community out there 
And um, if you haven't visited the Hugging Face Hub at huggingface.co, I would absolutely encourage you to do that today. Uh, you can sign up in a minute, <laughs> even less, and, um, and get access to uh, over 70,000 pre-trained models, um, mostly transformer models, but also models from additional libraries that we support. Um, and these models let you work on a variety of tasks from natural language processing, of course, to computer vision, to audio and speech. Um, we uh, even launched a video in the Transformers library just, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before, uh, and, and a few more things. So chances are you can find a pre-trained model that works for your use case. Uh, and, uh, and actually, that's what Cynthia will uh, tell us about in a minute. We also have uh, close to 10,000 data sets. I checked this morning, I think it's 9,960. <laughs> so probably by tonight, it's gonna be 10,000. Um, all open source, um, letting you again, uh, quickly experiment um, with uh, with your machine learning problems and, uh, and fine tuning models. And oops, sorry about that. And um, we have uh, we have over ten thousand organizations, so companies, research labs, uh, startups, enterprise, individuals, everything, uh, using the hub to build machine learning models, machine learning applications, and and also of course sharing um, models and data sets and applications even now with uh, with the machine learning community. So again, there's really one place to go, huggingface.co, um, and, um, and you can get started easily, okay? All right, uh, enough about Hugging Face. Uh, I want to hear <laughs> about the uh, really great application that, uh, that you've built, uh, Cynthia. So what's the problem um, before we go into the app and before we do a quick demo, what's the problem you, you're trying to solve here? Um, the thing is, um, a reliable and useful information on drugs do exist, but sometimes it can be difficult to access. It can be difficult uh, for the general public, for you or me, and it can be difficult for the medical doctors as well. So um, one of the ideas here at Synapse, we started a few years ago, to offer an assistant tool uh, in order to answer natural language question on drugs, such as, um, can I give this drug to a pregnant woman? Um, is nausea a known adverse effect for this kind of molecule, et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. um, so we started to build a model to answer to to understand and answer those questions in natural language uh, and then the the french health national agency uh, asked us uh, to know if we could provide such a tool but this time for the general public not for the doctors mm -hmm. uh, and if they could integrate it in their official website which is santé.fr um, the goal of this website it provides the, the French citizen an access to all the information about healthcare in France. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you live in France, certainly you've uh, <laughs> you've visited this website. So for for our, uh, our for our other viewers, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's probably new, but yeah, it's the main place. It's the main official website where anyone can go to get you know healthcare information and now get uh, healthcare answers correct yeah. yes yes official clear and reliable healthcare information yes uh, reliable have, is important you have hundreds of thousands of information uh, you have like more than 7000 uh, post articles research studies uh, clinical trials content etc okay and uh, in this website now you have yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can see it here that is included with the little pills uh, icon on the on the right okay and so it's in french i'm sorry you can only talk with galia in <laughs> french so maybe you can try um a simple question would be um 
Quelle est la posologie du doliprane? What okay. is the posology of doliprane? All right, so uh, let's just... Uh, contains um, paracetamol, ah. acetaminophen. So, okay, here you asked a question. It's a simple one. And the answer is, I understand you're looking for the posology. So the, how much you can... How many yeah, the, the dosage. Mm -hmm. Yes. The age. And you have a short answer that tells you, okay, uh, one pill at a time, uh, every four hours. You can click on see the long answer, which comes from the official uh, leaflet, the official uh -huh. you know, uh, instruction you can find in your big pills bottles, uh, or you can have the short answer. Um, but this is... And we see the source, which I think is very important. And you can go to the official source. Yes. Well. Every time you have the official source. Yeah, okay. All so we have... Come from the official source. Yeah, so you can trust it. You know, it's it's a trusted yeah. website and you get a, a trusted source, which, okay. uh, you know, is, is, a, is a, I guess, a huge problem for health information on, on the net. So should we try another one? <laughs> yeah, because this one is an easy one. You know, the this word one is pos posology, you, you can find it uh, right in the title of this uh, sentence. So maybe we can try something more difficult, like, um, um, can I give, um, I don't know, can I give um, ibuprofen? No, mm -hmm. I, I'm waiting for a baby. Can I take ibuprofen? J'attends un bébé. Est-ce que je peux prendre du nurofen? Okay, so here we go. And okay, and this time. So this is yeah, this is a, a more difficult one because there is more context right here, obviously. Okay, there is more context. And the answer is, uh, OK, I understand you want information on this drug, neurofen caps, why, which contains ibuprofen, uh, in context of pregnancy. And you mm -hmm. have uh, the short answer. So yes. this time, I, I didn't use the word pregnancy. I just said, mm -hmm. OK, I'm having a baby. And yes. uh, can I take this one? And you have the answer that they yeah, that says, uh, mm, be careful. <laughs> okay, so obviously this one is 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 trickier than you know uh -huh. matching keywords and and you know regular expressions and we we need to because there are so many ways to say hey you know I'm pregnant, um, so we we need something smarter to understand uh, what's going on here. Should we try your last one? Uh, the last one, the last one, uh, you should try the uh, la dépakine impacte t la qualité de vie? Does dépakine have an impact on your quality of life? Okay, which is a very fuzzy question in itself. Yeah. <laughs> so let's try it. And this time he's answering, okay, you're looking for maybe adverse effects of mm -hmm. dépakine, which, which is the underlying intent. Of Probably, your yes. Yeah. Probably you want to know if there is something um, bad that can happen if you take mm. this, this drug. Okay. And again, we get a, a very detailed answer. Yes. So yeah, this we time should... you have all the answer yeah. because it's quite big for all the adverse yeah. effects. Everybody yes. knows that you shouldn't <laughs> read yes. the adverse self, effects yeah. the first time yes. you're taking a pill because... Yeah. You... <laughs> but don't self-medicate, yeah. But don't self-medicate either. <laughs> don't self-medicate, yeah. Yes. So okay, if so... you have an adverse effect, you can check. So these examples, I think, are, are, are interesting. Um, one question that comes to mind is uh, how... How is it more difficult to build something for the general public uh, versus building something for you know doctors and, and medical professionals? Um, I won't say maybe more difficult, but at least different because mm -hmm. um, here you have a classification problem, an intent classification. You have a question, you want to know the intent and provide an answer. Um, for the general public, the difference uh, is that the questions will be different and the answers are going to be different too. Um, if the answers are more simple, um, you will answer with for you will answer for fewer type of questions because patients do not mm. want to know the pharmacodynamic or mm. I don't know the half life of a molecule. So really sure. the questions, you, okay, you, you don't need them. So it should be simpler. And uh, you want to provide an answer that comes from um, 
to the official um, instructions from the bottle and not the RCP, which are the professional um, instructions. Mm. Uh, okay. So, so yeah. And so, so yeah, I understand. So it's it's really it's very different, right? Because yeah. th there are so many ways like a doctor would state the question properly, right? Being very precise, uh -huh. <laughs> and they and would then, expect yeah, a very the... very detailed, very uh, you know um, again medical uh, oriented answer, uh, versus the general public who will ask very fuzzy you know, questions. incomplete questions yes. incomplete. And, and expecting something, uh, an answer that they can understand, even if they're, they, you know, they don't know anything about, uh, about medicine. Okay, so, so it's very so different. Yes, for the, for the, the, the question will be maybe the trickier part because the, the MD questions will be maybe a little bit simpler to analyze because they will be precise. They will use the good name of the molecules. Mm. Uh, we hope that they make less spelling mistakes also, which is a big part. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had, we had a few of, in there. <laughs> uh, mistakes. <laughs> okay. And the vocabulary is precise. So, um, so, okay, yes. so we yeah, so we yeah, so we need we need something to unpack the fuzzy questions yeah. and prepare the understandable answers. And of course, yes. you know, we would tend to think a machine learning model will do that. Um, so let's move on. So assuming you know uh, machine learning is a good solution for this, um, you know, often the the first um, the first thing to do is to build a data set, right? We want to build a data set that we can start training models on. So did you actually start with that or did you do it differently? Uh, yes, you, you have to build a data set, but we, we, at the beginning, we started with the medical doctor model. And for this one, at the really beginning, uh, we didn't try a model. We just used, just, <laughs> use uh, regex uh, patterns okay. because uh, I sh we, we show you the, um, the first question, what is the posology? Posology is a simple word. You can mm. use a regex to find posology and know that you want to know how many pills I can prescribe to my patient. So at the beginning, it was easy just to use that, uh, provide the tool and mm -hmm. collect a data set of medical doc doctors using the assistant asking, asking questions. So we collected the questions, we see if the answer are correct or not, and we started to re-annotate this data set that was pre-annotated by the, the regex. Okay. And it was like our first data set, uh, like a semi-automatic data set. Okay, interesting. Uh, and um, of course, uh, the, the data were uh, corrected by uh, data, data scientists and medical doctor, because here at Synapse, we have a big team of pharmacists and doctors mm -hmm. uh, that um, proofread everything we are doing. Yeah. And again, you, you want an answer you can trust. So I think yeah. it's, uh, it's interesting that you combine uh, automatic annotation and mm -hmm. uh, human verification with yes. medical experts <laughs> it's a uh, you know you get the best uh, the, the best of both worlds yeah, so um, this way we have a collection of lots of questions obviously questions with spelling mistakes and and so on and we can start to build uh, on it and try to improve the answers because regex can not be enough for this of problem. course so once you had a first model, uh, first, I'm sorry, once you had a first data set, mm -hmm. um, what's the first machine learning technique that you applied and how did so, it go? Obviously, we tried uh, the simple classical model because you should always start with simple yes. models. So, uh, always start simple is a yes, good, is good advice. Simple. Mm -hmm. You take the scikit-learn library and mm -hmm. try yeah. all the, the classification model. And we did the benchmark. Um, so to analyze the text, we use um, TF-IDF and then mm -hmm. to classify uh, all the classical models. And at the end, it was the random forest that make uh, Okay. Uh, good score, and we implemented implemented uh, this model. And I, I think we have some some yeah, metrics. We have uh, the first me... results. So yes, uh, it was me... in two thousand and nineteen. We have uh, like 
I don't know, small training set of 2000 uh, questions, uh, which covered like 20 intents. So uh, mm -hmm. quite a huge number because there is all those question, medical question about the half life and so on. So, uh, and we had a pretty decent uh, F1 score uh, of mm -hmm. 0 0.94. But the thing is, um, depending on intent, the score could be really high or um, much less interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a good point because yes, and and it's I think it's worth mentioning. You know, those metrics, they those aggregating metrics, mm -hmm. they they give you the high level picture. But uh, if you break them down into yeah. you know per class F one scores. Often, you know, you'll notice some class are very, very highly mm -hmm. recognized and understood, uh, and some are terrible. Um, yeah. And and you know that's that's not okay. I think uh, you know that's not okay. If some class is for medication, particularly, you know, if the model consistently gives bad advice or bad answers for particular particular drugs or particular health questions, you know, it's something you want to fix. But I, I would agree, 0.84 is a very good baseline. It's a it's a very good starting point. And it shows that you know you can you can extract uh information from from the training set. So yeah good so starting point. <laughs> when I was digging for information to prepare the, this webinar, uh, I came across the um, old um how do you say um I missed the word, the, the score for all mm -hmm. uh, the Indians. And uh, there was some of them that were like uh, really missing. And mm. um, then it's it's not that the, it's going to be dangerous to answer the wrong question, but it was be it will be totally useless. Yeah, it's useless. So um, the thing is, if we do not understand the question uh, in Santé Fair, you will, for example, have the infamous uh, message that says, sorry, I didn't understand. Mm, sure, <laughs> Please sure. ask again. Or we, if we understood what, he, what is the drug, because um, finding what is the drug in the question is also another problem. But sure. for this one, it's simpler. We have dictionaries of of specialties of uh, medication and we can match see uh, to, to, to find the good one. And if at least we find uh, the good one, we say, okay, we understand you're talking about uh, ibuprofen. I didn't understand the question. Mm. Here are um, common uh, answer we can give you contraindication, uh, posology, etc. Sure. So we provide this. So a, a okay. bad answer won't be uh, it's not harmful. Yeah, it's, not harmful. Be... Yeah. It's, it's useless. Okay. So we want to do better. And, and in fact, you did much better. Mm -hmm. uh, and you started looking at transformer models because they have this reputation for being pretty good with natural language <laughs> so for, a few, for a few years. So tell us about that. Tell us about yeah, the, 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 the switch to transformers and, and the, the particular model you started to work with. And uh, you know, how did it go? So it, it was a good timing. When, when I arrived in Synapse Medicine, this was, there was this model and uh, I had to work on the first subjects. And we, we were like, okay, uh, there is a good opportunity to, to try those transformers that everyone is talking about and uh, that should be really useful. And we were curious to see if uh, the results could be improved with this. Uh, and it is the moment where I, I, I start to share my love for Hugging Face because um, <laughs> we can uh, get all the models and the API and everything quite easily. So good timing. Everything was perfect. We, 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 we started to, to make a, a proof, of, proof of concept. And uh, we start uh, with uh, the Camembert model. For yes. Frank. And of course, if you're not if you're not French, you will not understand the joke. But Camembert is, uh, I guess, the most famous French cheese. And, yes. Uh, you, you have to try it, of course. Uh, and it, it's obviously also a French version of the famous Bert model. So mm -hmm. there you go. Who's, who said machine learning uh, engineers didn't have any sense of humor? <laughs> so tell us about Camembert and, and the first uh, the first experiments. Um, so Camembert uh, was really well suited for classification issues. So um, 
we wanted to try it uh, on our classification problem. But even before that, really quickly, we knew that our problem was uh, quite specific because mm -hmm. the word we are using, the question we are answering, uh, uses specific vocabulary. Uh, the medical and the drug vocabulary is not uh, a common one. So, um, okay, big spoiler. <laughs> yeah, don't look, don't look at all the don't lines. Look, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the final benchmark that um, we we are still uh, going on improving and testing several mm -hmm. models. But um, so we, we started with the Camembert and really soon we wanted to try to go further during the pre-training of Camembert model. That is mm. to say. So, yeah, so before you jump into that, so we, we can actually see Cam the 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 ba basic Camembert. Uh, the basic was Camembert, uh, yes. Was already, you know, was already an improvement, right? It was already an improvement. Not so much an improvement mm. yeah. when you're doing cross validation. As yes. you can see yeah. the numbers. So it's a little it's lower. Blue yeah. and red um, bars. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, the numbers are quite the same. Um, on the final test set, because we, we did cross validation, five fold cross validation to select uh, the model, and uh, we, uh, we kept uh, final uh, test set. Mm. Uh, on this set, but since we retrained on all our five fold cross validation set and test on the final test set, but we had more data so maybe that's yeah. why the results are better we don't we don't we don't we don't know but the thing is uh, the third column of result on the right of the screen is are the result for all the questions that regex cannot address. yes and here we see the the huge difference and here Where, we know, start to see really a huge yes. difference on the difficult yes. questions sure sure uh, so i think the lesson here is it's it's worth trying you know we said start the simple things first so okay random forest traditional algos but then the next logical reasonable step is to start with a fine a pre-trained model right something that's completely off the shelf um, and see you know what works better what doesn't before you actually go into fine tuning which is what you did on uh, with a medi camembert and those yeah, names, so, those model names get crazy now. So um, I'm so sorry for non-French speaking <laughs> people because there is also a joke here. So really quickly, Camembert is the cheese, Medicament is drugs. Yes, um, Medicament is drugs. Right. Okay, uh, I found it funny. So it's a joke within a joke. <laughs> okay. um, so yeah, so I mean, start with the the pre-trained model first, yeah. and then fine tune. Okay, so tell us how you actually built Medicament. What was the what was the, the process, you know, how did the fine tuning go? How did that story go? We see the numbers there. They're much, much better here. Um, but what does it take to get there? So here you have to start to be domain specific. That is to say, you want to go further during the pre-training of the Camembert base model. You take the Camembert base and uh, go on training the um, MLM task this time on uh, medical data, that mm -hmm. is to say um, medical Wikipedia and um, the RCP I talked about earlier, which are the instructions for the professionals. So all information for every drugs, uh, we put it and try to learn uh, the relation, uh, the patterns in the sentences. Uh, in those sentences. So then you have a model that is more specialized on mm. medical uh, words, sentences. And this model, this time, we retrain it on, uh, we fine tune it on the uh, classification, intent classification task. And we have uh, those results you can see. Uh, and, and, and you know, when we that, prepared the, the, the webinar, you know, uh, we, we looked at those numbers. And, and, you know, some people could think, well, you know, we went through fine tuning and we only jumped from 0.895 to 0.912. So it doesn't look crazy impressive, but it is a huge difference, right? Um, and, you know, I guess people expect, oh, you know, I'm going to get 0.98 or... <laughs> 
Point ninety nine, no. but point no, the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, point ninety nine is a big lie, it's and, a lie. <laughs> and the, the that that uh, that improvement from you know line two to line three from Camembert to Medi Camembert is actually very significant. Yeah, we we were really happy with this one. Yeah. And actually, this model is the one that is in production right now. Okay, so, so it's the one you, on the on the on the government yeah, website. When okay. you are asking question on Santé point fair, um, part of the question will be answered by Regex because all mm -hmm. the simpler one will be answered by Regex. And every time Regex cannot find the answer, you switch to this medicament Bert model. Okay, uh, and so you have the the final score you can see here. Uh, that provide much more interesting results. But we could see that the, the results were going to be much more inter interesting even uh, uh, during the um, domain-specific pre-training uh -huh. because we had some sentences like, um, uh, you know, the MLM task, you want to know, um, uh, you, you hide a word and want to know uh, uh -huh. what it is. And for example, if you have a sentence like um, the iron something was um camembert will say the iron mining mm -hmm. mine iron and the medicamembert will say iron concentration because you know iron is in, the, in, in your blood so sure. uh, even then we knew that it could be interesting and uh, the result is the is here okay so this is the one in production today uh yeah. but we, we have more models i see you know distilled version so what's the What's the idea here? Uh, we see the numbers, and you know the the last the last line in the in the in the table is uh, is looking very nice. But what's the what's the idea here? Why why are you distilling? What do you expect from it? Um, because uh, the first time we only tried on Camembert directly, and then uh -huh. we we say okay, uh, maybe we don't need such a big model like the wall Camembert, maybe this still Camembert could do as well. And so we tried it. So this one is not yet uh, in production, mm -hmm. but if you look at the result, um, in fact, they are even a little bit better for at least for the cross validation and the final, the global final test one. Uh, there is only for the um, test on the difficult question that Medicamembert, the big one, mm. would be uh, still be better, but it's not really a surprise that on um, big difficult yeah. questions such a model would be better. But so it's a it's a trade off, right? Again, yeah, exactly. Uh, considering that the distilled Camembert take like thirty percent less time to train. Uh, that his size is half the size. Um, maybe we should consider. <laughs> uh, I think the next step would be to, we didn't do that yet, but the next step would be to take all those answers that were amiss with this Camembert and see maybe with the medical team um, if it's okay, if it's like really complicated questions and or with lots of problems, I don't know. We have to decide. Yeah, it's it's but it's yeah, and it shows again the iterative nature of uh, of machine learning. I think you 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 know this project can exactly is is a great illustration of mm -hmm. that. You know, start with a simple algos, and then try something more complex, and even that can be further refined and and iterated on. And uh, it's not a long. You know, I see customers going into you know twelve months uh, tunnels before they get to see a model but no uh, you know it's uh, you have to start small iterate learn what works learn what's done what doesn't work and i think the hugging face models and the hugging face libraries are a really a really good way to do that i think we have a little more yeah a little more information here on the uh, yeah, uh, intent so, oh, this is a very busy slide but yeah if you can yeah, summarize it <laughs> the big confusion matrix so yeah. a really busy slide but just to to show uh, where we are good at and where we are not. So it's the last um, mm. distilled camembert, medistilled camembert, uh, the, the one that is um, uh, pre-trained on medical mm. data. Um, so good answer are on the diagonal. And we have some bad answers, but the thing is for the patient model, so the santé point fair model, um, those questions won't be asked a lot. It's uh, 
um, nephrology questions, for example, mm. I see here um, that won't be predicted really well. Um, and some mistakes also can be understood. Be, for example, you have mistakes on um, the intent posology for mm -hmm. a child that usually mm. can be um, mistaken for intent for only uh, posology, for example, okay. you miss the child information, which, which is a problem. And we are definitely, we, we definitely want to uh, target so spe special issues, but some other um, mistakes are less, um, are less problem. And if we uh, make a confusion be between pharmacocinetic and pharmacodynamic, I think, okay, it's yeah. okay. For patient. Yeah, for, for, yeah, for oh, the general public, it's, it's not. It's <laughs> and not don't so ask important. me the difference. I won't be able to. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Okay, uh, be, before, uh, I think we, we have a few questions. Um, oh, yeah. But before we look at questions, so what's next? So obviously there's work on the models and building, you know, smaller or more accurate models, uh, faster models, etc. But generally, what what else are you working on? So, um, try other models, uh, study our mistakes. Uh, we want also maybe to increase our data set. Uh, for example, the pre-training data set. We would like to add all the. Um, general public um, instructions also, because we only used um, the medical doctors once, and we want to add a vocabulary that maybe is closest to the one that the general public will use. Maybe it will improve or, or not. Uh, maybe we would like us to try uh, multi-label models. Mm -hmm. And I think the... Um, the biggest things that we want to try is to use this medicament BERT model for other projects. For example, sure. uh, when you show us uh, the use of Santé.fr, uh, you add answers. And those answers, the short answer one, for example, there is a model behind that will go through all the instructions and take only um, the relevant uh, sentence for the good uh, the good answer, and we for the moment for this model we are not using transformers, and we could completely maybe try and use uh, the medicament that model. Okay. And we have all um, we have lots of other projects that could use, uh, <laughs> and we'll have more webinars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, we have a few more minutes. I want to make sure we we answer questions. Thank okay. you so much for for all the the detailed info, uh, Cynthia. I'm sure you know everybody. Uh, everybody learns a lot here, uh, including including me. Okay, so short answers, please. Uh, so, how many documents did you need for domain adaptation? Um, I don't have the exact number in mind. I'm so sorry. I think it's uh, a, a few thousand um, okay. instruction list and all mm -hmm. the medical Wikipedia. So okay. I don't have in mind how much does it make at the end. It's quite okay. huge. Okay, it's not huge, yeah. But maybe uh, we can use less. We didn't really yeah. study the impact of okay. the quantity of... Uh, uh, did different. you need to change the hyperparameters when fine tuning? Um, or uh, did you completely ignore it? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, we, we, we did the work on the hyperparameter um, for the domain adaptive bird, but um, it was for performance issues uh, to work. We, we, we are lock, uh, working on or uh, or machine or on a, a special machine, but um, the training times were like was quite huge, mm. so we spent quite a lot of time to set the parameters for that. But then for the training parameters, not really um, okay. special. So parameters. Not a huge okay, not a no. huge thing. No, no, okay, no, no. Which which and I hear for distilled models we didn't change from uh, okay. Tilbert right. to Canada. So, Maybe we should, if you have um, advice, we, we can take it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, next question. Have you considered stacking more than one transformer model? No, Ensembling not... in general, have you looked at it? No, ensembling is usually a really good answer for all uh, classification model. And we did not, we should, 
and we can add it on the list. Okay, next project. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> did you did you have any concern about class imbalance? Um, yeah, it... we, we try some data augmentation. I see it in the question. Yeah. Uh, we tried it to uh, um, increase the support for the um, the, the, the really uh, the the classes where we have not enough support. Um, it did not in it improved a little bit the results, but not as much as we wanted. And uh, it was a trade off. We spent a lot of time uh, augmenting the data set, and the result was not so good. So uh, yeah, we were not so happy with it. Okay, uh, um, we have another one. Uh, how do you interpret the better result for the distilled model compared to the base model in the cross-validation general case? Um, That's a good one. Yeah. It's That's a, a proper one. data scientist question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Um, the thing is, this model is a really recent improvement, a really recent try. Uh, it was during this summer and this September. So mm. uh, for the moment, uh, I told you that uh, we wanted to analyze that, those results. So we did not took time uh, to see. Yeah, why. it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Random. <laughs> Uh, or if um... my intuition would be that a smaller model can generalize better, can generalize, but at the same time, for the difficult but, question, it's less good. So, yes, so it's a, it's a trade off. I, I've seen it for it's completely different, but I've seen it on quantized model, which, mm -hmm. which surprisingly, um, surprisingly would generalize better than, than bigger models. Because I guess if you have smaller parameter ranges, you know there's less overfitting. And mm -hmm. but but I think it's exactly what you said, Cynthia. It's it's a little more generalization versus uh, a little more. Um, a little you know what loss. you gain in generalization, and, yeah. you lose in in you fine lose. very fine grained answers. Yeah. But and yeah, now it, we have to decide if this loss is acceptable or yeah, yeah. Or very, those it's a hard question. Okay, I guess that's going to be the last one. Uh, and it's okay. one I wanted to ask as well. Um, how would you deploy production models? What type of technologies do you use? Okay, uh, so um, the models are stored on a MinIO um, service. We are uh, using, we, are start, we have started to use MLflow to do our training, et cetera. And for the deployment, we have a test cluster when then we have the QA team and medical team and everybody <laughs> trying to, to, to test it and then a production cluster uh, for, um, dedicated to Santé.fr, um, which means that the, the data are stored in um, one specific place and protected place. Okay, well, we have more questions coming in, but I think Ooh. we need, yeah, we need to stop now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Cynthia, what should we do? Uh, should I uh, encourage everybody here to connect with you on uh, yes, on course. LinkedIn, maybe? Or, yes, or... on LinkedIn. So, okay. uh, give me a message. Uh, okay, okay. The webinar, I have questions. <laughs> All right, yes. Be polite. Be Introduce time, yourself. Right. <laughs> yes, please, uh, please I connect. I hope you won't be 100 to do that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, please connect and, uh, and, and I'm sure uh, Cynthia can answer uh, more questions directly. Okay. Yes, uh, Cynthia, thank you so much for your time. I think thank it was, you, a, Julien, it was super interesting. Yeah. By the way, I wanted to thank Sébastien and Jul Julien, or Julien, who helped, <laughs> um, who helped me to prepare for this uh, webinar. All right. Yes. It's a team effort always. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. I hope you had a good time. I, ho I hope you learned a lot like I did. And, uh, and yeah, check out, uh, check out Synapse Medicine, uh, connect with Cynthia, ask more questions. And of course, uh, try, uh, point fair. <laughs> if you try, speak try French. yeah. If you speak <laughs> French, you can try the, the, the bot on Santé.fr. And of course, uh, keep following Hugging Face. Uh, for for more news, uh, we have a, a big launch coming next week. We have information on the website, so you may want to check that out. Okay, enough talk. Have a good Thank day, everybody. Everyone. See you later. Bye. bye bye. Thank you. Thanks again.